Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Is it okay? Uh, can you hear me? I appreciate uh, that uh, indeed that you stayed until the late presentation, and I do realize that I'm the last person standing between you and uh, reception, I guess, beer. So <laughs> I'll try to, to keep it short. Um, I work at Pivotal, I'm an engineer there, there where I focus on big data, distributed systems. I'm uh, privileged to spend enough time on working on open source projects. I'm Apache Committer and PLC, PMC member for. Apache Kerns project. Today I would, I'm going to talk about uh, two interesting trends. One is, ha has happened in the last decade, the last 10 years. This is the NoSQL and big data. And the other one is the implementation of SQL interfaces for various NoSQL data systems, which seems to be happening. It's a big team in the last year and year and a half. And this is a quote I found from Martin Fowler uh, from 2012, where he predicts that if it's ever, if, if ever SQL gets implemented on top of established NoSQL, this at least would generate plenty of arguments. And I believe this talk is one of those, going to be one of those arguments. So a little bit of context, uh, the big data and NoSQL, NoSQL uh, Big Bang. We've been, so this is a landscape of big data technologies for the last year. You see, actually, from according to some sources, we have over 150 commercially supported NoSQL and big data systems out there. So what actually explains this explosion, considering that for decades we've been happy, or some people have been happy with relational databases? Uh, it's difficult to, to judge by, by, by the name of those projects, NoSQL, or actually the, the, those trends, NoSQL or big data, they really don't provide any prescriptive prescriptive definitions, but if you think of them more like a movement and try to understand what are the driving forces behind them, I think it, this helps to position them and to understand why they're so vibrant and what makes them, makes them think, tick. On the first place, I think there's some consensus about this, one of the main driving forces behind those technologies and the boom of those technologies is the uh, boom of internet itself. The fact that uh, explosion of um, a web mobile technologies, Internet of Things, practically any device now, uh, yeah, even smaller one, is a source of information and generate information. And the, this in turn generates a, a, a cause, uh, a three main uh, challenges. This is how to handle the volume of data, the velocity of data, and the variety of all these data sources. So, in, and Internet is the, the, the cause for these technologies or to, for, for the demand for those challenges. On the other hand, it is actually the solution as well. In order to handle, to scale, to provide technologies that can handle uh, and, and, and address those uh, challenges, you are going to use, again, distributed systems. And in turn, using distributed systems for, uh, for, for resolving those challenges means that some of the already presumed uh, uh, technologies and uh, guarantees that relational databases provide, like ACID or two-phase two commits, would be challenged and has to be addressed in a different way. Uh, it's known, for example, that the two-phase commit would uh, hang into, in, in certain cases in, in failure distributed systems. So uh, all new class of, of, of approaches, uh, for example, the uh, <coughs> consistency and uh, availability in case of partitioning of distributed systems, this is the CAP or uh, theorem, is are meant to the EU, and this is part of the distributed system and uh, the, many of the technologies that, that, um, that implement this. Uh, Paxos, on the other hand, and uh, uh, as I mentioned, the two-phase commit is, is not really a reliable approach to, to ensure consistency within the distributed environment. So all class of uh, consensus-based, quorum-based systems like Paxos uh, uh, have emerged, and, and many of the NoSQL systems actually are based on those type of technologies. Another not that popular, but I think very important driving force is the so-called um, um, relational or object relational impedance mismatch, uh, which relational database, I'm not sure many of you maybe have done some application development. They know that for some class of applications, you just need to persist your application state, which in my case is more, more, very often is an object-based state, into a relational database. For this, you would need some sort of ORM technologies, which is ne unnecessary for many use cases, as I mentioned. And this gave birth to technologies uh, like Mongo or document-based data store. This actually is a huge group of technologies out there driven by, by this mismatch. Furthermore, different type of stores uh, and, and demands like graph-based databases or full-text search, where the traditional um, representation of database models and strict uh, 
very often the role-based relational models is not very, very appropriate to, to deal with. And there are many other factors, but I think those three kind of uh, uh, are powerful enough to, to explain why there is a such a surge of, of technologies out there. The last one I want to talk is the cloud computing uh, race and wave itself. Um, the possibilities to program the infrastructure, actually to automate this infrastructure, to have inf infrastructure on demand, is a main driver for eliminating the operational complexity and the cost. And there is another side effect of this and this more architectural. There is this sub-movement, sub, sub I would say, which is shift from integration to application type of databases. This is very popular into the microservices or, or type of data applications. So the idea is that if you have your application, instead of having a single data store as an application state for your distributed application, you rather have a dedicated application store for each application and have a well-defined protocol at application level between these applications so the database is not shared among them. Uh, I think, I hope those, those, uh, those uh, forces explain the reason why there is such a multitude of technologies out there. And I don't want to justify this or to, 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 to dive further. The point is that there are out there their lot, and as I said, over 150 commercially supported one. And one of the interesting uh, consequences of this is that um, uh, almost any organization would end up with having at least few of those uh, technologies uh, deployed in, 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 in their data store, data in their infrastructure. So, interesting question raised how they're going to integrate those technologies? This multitude of database that would usually they would have at least few data storage technologies dedicated to particularly good for particular co co uh, type of use cases. And um, it was discussed today. I've observed, I have observed so far two main trends that uh, trying to, to provide this type of integration and by the way, the integration of technologies is, is very big deal to, to, to do. Usually the standard ETL technologies and systems are trying to cope with this. That's not what I'm going to talk today. I'm really trying to uh, talk about how an organization can provide a single holistic view over the data that is spread across different data stores, which might be useful for certain use cases. Very often those are the analytical or maybe some data science type of use cases to, to train their data sets. So two main uh, trends uh, are emerging that are aiming to, to in my opinion, to, to converge or to provide more unified view on the data system and data processing system. One is more functional um, based, it's unified programming model, and you can, today it was mentioned, there was a very nice presentation comparing the interfaces of uh, Spark and Flink. You have noticed that they're very close, and actually they're not the only two that are very similar. Apex, Apache Crunch, Cascading, Apache Beam, they're all actually inspired by a common pa one paper from 2010, I think it's Flume Java, Google paper, uh, as, as, a, as a type of API. And there is a trend now, at least, uh, that Spark, Flink, and Apex are implementing and converging at certain level under Apache Beam. As a project, so this is an, this is an example a snippet of uh, how Apache Beam looks as a as a notation. The second trend, and that's what I'm going to focus now today, is uh, apparently a lot of the NoSQL vendors and big data vendors are starting to implement uh, SQL interfaces for their data stores or some sort of SQL-like interfaces for for their backend data stores. And some statistics from the last couple of years for Hadoop so shows that apparently majority of the, the tasks that are run on Hadoop nowadays are either Hive-based or SQL, some sort of SQL and Hadoop uh, type of uh, solutions out there. Also for Spark, I, there is a report from last year states that the most used production component is the Spark SQL within their system. So there is this, um, and I, I stated Google F1 paper actually has a quote there that any data system has to provide SQL interface. And I, I found this particularly important because a lot of the big data technologies are now in the open space are influenced from the Google papers. So there is this shift in ideas and it's interesting movement to, and, and trend to, to observe. Apparently a lot of company, I think it, it, it's worth it to, 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 to try to reason what are the reason, uh, what, what is the main driver for, for, for this movement, if to, for this convergence. Uh, it seems like the desire, there is a lot of tools that know how to talk SQL out there with, within the organization. So it seems like SQL is a pretty easy way to integrate with, with, with those existing tools. So this is more like legacy, legacy reason. Secondary, um, and I think this is a um, uh, more important one, is the relational model that stays under uh, uh, <coughs> 
usually SQL engines, and this is the, 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 the hot bits that we can talk about, we should talk about today. And I think this is an important slide, although it doesn't seem very, very bright. Uh, I, I can argue that practically any useful data system out there, in one or another form, provides, implements the set or back semantics. So operators like projection, filtering, if the system is more advanced, some sort of join or, or, or group by, would be present. So in order to, to provide some usefulness for the users, the system has to implement explicitly or implicitly this opera those operators. So having this and acknowledging that this exists, uh, and very often in order to implement a pipeline or, or query execution uh, uh, statement, you have to chain multiple operators like this. And when you start to play with this concept, you realize that practically this is the same relational algebra concept that are very common in the relational space. And there is a tools that are very good in optimizing some type of change. And those are the planners. And uh, indeed, the relational expression optimizers are very desirable feature for many of the technologies, big data technologies. Simply, they're very difficult to implement. And, uh, that's uh, <coughs> at least they were very difficult to implement until le uh, recently. Now there are at least a couple of, of open source technologies out there that provide some 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 uh, some help and uh, are useful to to consider and try to use and leverage in order to provide this type of uh, uh, relational expressions and relational optimization within the existing big data systems. <coughs> I'm proposing here, I mean, this is, again, just a simple subset of it's a possible way how you can integrate, how organization are, I, I'm dealing with a lot of customers out there, so I have some first-hand experience with some big players in, in, in the field and seeing how, and experience how they preserve and pre, uh, how, how they see the, the, the usefulness of the data, how they're trying to integrate the, their data. And it seems like the most common approach is this one, so this and this is standard uh, federated database system approach. So you pick one database that allows you to implement uh, uh, connectors to external databases or the external data systems, no SQL, and then you can provide kind of single review on your system just via external tables, which are representation, uh, sorry, <laughs> which are representation of the external no SQL data systems. Uh, in this case, I have experienced with uh, Apache Hawk, which is yet another tool derived from the green plan that we discussed today, again, which was derived from Postgres. It's an MPP shared nothing solution, which has very power. They actually share very similar uh, optimizer, or it's org optimizer inside. And uh, what's more important, provides a PXF framework. This is a Java extension framework, which allows you to actually implement a plugins for external systems. So this is, I call it, an N1N model, because the organization would use a singular SQL, usually Postgres, GDBC, Connection, or ODBC, to talk with one um, MPP database. And via the extension mechanism, would be able to see some portions of, of the, of the NoSQL system itself uh, outside. Second approach is. Uh, far more interesting in my opinion because it provides more autonomous autonomous for, for, for the NoSQL system themselves is to implement a SQL adapter for each system in isolation. And for this purpose there is a framework, very powerful framework out there called Apache Calcite. Um, and as you can see, in this case, each of the uh, NoSQL system would actually have its own SQL representation interface, its own optimization. The advantage of this is that you might be able to tune the optimizers for, for, for SQL optimizers and the relational algebra op op expression uh, optimizers better to the particular specifics of the NoSQL system. And, um, there is an interesting Jira ticket, a Jira issue that recently popped up, which is exploring the possibilities to bridge those two approaches. <coughs> Just one slide about the first, the federated database approach, how it looks like. So on the SQL standpoint, you're creating a table that looks like this, standard type. The interesting bit is that here you're providing location to your NoSQL data system where you want to, to wrap. And you have to implement three classes, which is the fragmenter, accessor, and uh, the resolver. The, the purpose of the fragmenter is that if the, data, the NoSQL data store allows you to partition the data in, in streams that you can process in parallel, the role of the fragmenter is indeed to establish this partition for each of the streams or separate streams in parallel, the accessor actually breaks them into a collection of rows, key value rows. And for each of the, these value rows, the resolver, the last component you have to implement, would convert it into a, 
column, uh, <laughs> column uh, list which would match these uh, interfaces. There is much more internals. You can pass analytics and stuff to, to, to configure the statistics in order to optimize the, uh, help the optimizer to adjust according to this particular data store. And um, this is very powerful approach. Uh, if you, for example, already have Hadoop and Hawk in, or, like system in your infrastructure, and you can just implement this such type of plugins and wrap and provide holistic view of your um, backend system. Um, <laughs> the second approach, or the direct one, is to implement a SQL interface around your uh, and, and leverage SQL optimizer around your uh, NoSQL database. And for this, the Apache frame, Apache CalSite framework uh, provides you query parser. This is SQL query parser, validator and optimizer. I think this is the most important bits here. Uh, as a bonus, you get the GDBC driver, which you can talk with the uh, system. And one very important design decision about a cow site is to stay out of the business of how data is stored and processed, which in turn makes it very useful to implement and wrap almost any existing data store out there. I think this is by design and it's a very powerful decision. And if you take a look about the various technologies out there that use in one another way Apache cow site, you would see that most of the big play already using it inside. What I did, I'm working on Apache Geot adapter. The, uh, Apache Geot is in memory data grid, yet another key value store, distributed hash. And I'm going to use some of the examples just as a reference to illustrate how it looks like. So this, uh, assuming that you decide to implement a SQL adapter using Apache CalSize for your backend uh, data store, no SQL data store, there are a couple of decisions you have to make. And uh, um, they're very important regarding the, from one side, how much SQL completeness you are going to expose and compliant with the SQL standard. On the other hand, um, how much you're going to, to, to leverage the power of the NoSQL, NoSQL system you have. So the first thing is you have to decide how you're going to convert your data type from the existing NoSQL system, let's say this is key value store, or it could be even like some sort of graph representation, into a table or format that is expected by CalSite. And CalSite has the standard metadata expected. It's the catalog schema, which is collection of uh, tables, table, which is collection of rows, and row is uh, just a list of, uh, of columns represented with the relational data type. So this is important decision because let's say that you want to express as some sort of a JSON or Java object which has hierarchy and you have to uh, flatter in, in some tabular format, you have to decide whether you're going to spend computation and a lot of serialization to, do, to achieve this or you just can afford to implement only top level fields or some smartness and stuff. So it's up to you to decide what is the, it's a trade off. So how much you're going to expose from your model as, a, as an opposite of the performance that you're going to gain or lose. And the second more important thing, and this is general principle for any data, distributed data system, is move the computation next to the data, not other way around. Partic yeah, that means that um, uh, if you, in, in, in case of, uh, in, in, in the context of the SQL query, you would like to run the executions of this query next to the node to where data is stored, rather than actually moving the data to some central node where this processing is happening and then moving it back and forth. Uh, in the context of Apache CalSite, you have two approaches to, to achieve this. The first one is simple. I call it simple. It just allows you to, to implement a very simple, simple inter table interface with uh, um, a ability to push down the predicates. Predicates are uh, operators, relational operators, like filters and, 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 and projections. That means that if you have select some fields, uh, where, from some table where something, it makes really sense these fields and the, the where clause and the conditions to be pushed down to your NoSQL solution and you pre-filter and pre-process and return back only the amount of data that is necessary for, okay, for, for, for the, for the uh, system to process. I'm going to hurry up. Here's, this is an example how it looks, this simple scenario. You connecting to, I'm not sure if it's visible, this GDBC adapt, this is the Apache CalSite GDBC uh, protocol. So when you connect to GDBC via the Apache CalSite GDBC driver to your backend system, you have to provide a model in JSON format. The only thing that model contains is your entry point implementation of the uh, schema factory. 
with some uh, 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 operands that are relevant for, for your backend systems. Uh, the role of this uh, schema is usually one liner of implementation is to create a schema uh, based on those operators that uh, operands that you have provided. The schema in turn depends on the mapping that you have decided uh, to, to m implement for your backend system, NetSQL system and the relational stuff would create a list of tables. And um, the important thing is that you have to implement the column types within these tables. Then when a query comes, it would be passed uh, through the scan parameter. So the from this book order usually would mean that it is going to collect, try to ex extract this data set from your NoSQL database and convert it, in the, the convert method convert it into type that is compliant with the table definitions. The trick here is that in this simple implementation, you would get all data. So there is no any moving of the computation code to the data. Everything goes uh, uh, to the central uh, processor and get processed there. There are two versions that you can optimize this computation. It's called that um, instead of scannable table, you can implement sc future scannable table or projected future scannable table, which allows you to push down the filters and projectors. But that's everything that you can do as an optimization. If you have a joins operators or group by operators, everything would happen central place on the client side. And the second approach that the CalSite allow, uh, provides you with uh, is to implement your own relational rules and, uh, uh, and relational operators that would allow you to in provide implementation much closer to the to the native uh, uh, NoSQL system. In this case, this is a Apache Geode, and this is very uh, fast uh, going. So how it looks like? GDBC. This is everything in blue is the standard uh, Apache CalSite framework. This is the bits that you have to implement in order to uh, to, to provide the adapter, and this is code generated by CalSite. So SQL query comes, it is passed to the uh, parser. SQL is converted into a relational expression and tree. It's, it goes through the planner, which performs some optimizations. Actually, while performing these optimizations, um, <coughs> optimized tree is passed to the enumer enumerable component, which is responsible to convert this logical plan into physical plan. And this is already the tricky part. In, in this process, actually, if you have implemented your own rules or, or operators, the enumerable components would consult those and would provide a, a well-tailored uh, implementation. Actually, it uses the expression trees. This is concept from Link for Link for J. I think this is something that comes from 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 uh, Microsoft. And this interpreter actually generates Java code that's optimized for this implementation, compiles it, and the GDBC query is executed. So that's the whole full <laughs> the complete uh, line. And I'm going to skip this. Those are the internals of the, uh, if you're going to implement your own rules and, and, and operators in CalSite, you'd have to get acquainted with this. <laughs> and this is the generic part. And if you see any of the implementations of the CalSite adapter out there, more or less implement and follow these, uh, these steps here. And just I would finish with the example. Let's say that you have these relational expressions. This is the uh, relational uh, uh, operators that you would see. You, know, you have a join of two tables, filter and project two of the fields. So uh, the optimizer's role would be to convert and to push some of the operators closer to the data. So you see the projects, so to re uh, reduce the amount of data that moves upwards. So this is usually the logical part of the parser, of the optimizer. And this is the real example with the uh, uh, Apache Geot uh, uh, adapter that I've worked on. If you have this query, this is the logical plan. You see that you have no any optimization, the, the scan on the tables, then join is performed, then filter on the, this uh, one of the fields, and projection extract two of the fields. If you use the simple uh, scannable approach, which doesn't implement any rules, you would have some advantage so that the planner would already reorder this, or, or, uh, this, uh, this operator in a way that would be, be executed much more efficiently. But still, most of the computation would happen on the client side where the, G, uh, the GDBC or the, OQ, the SQL query is performed. If you move one step and you implement the, your own rules and have something that's much more tailored to your NAS, NoSQL data system, in this case, I have implemented uh, um, Geode project, Geode filterboard, there is a also a group by. You see that actually it uses those operators and it leverages practically a lot of those operators now executed on the NoSQL system itself. Still, you see that join is not implemented there. I'm working on this. That means that now this query would practically would be converted into two subqueries run on the NoSQL system and the result would be returned and be performed on the client side. But this is something that you can progress on typical GDBC, how we are going to use this from 
stand, Java standpoint. And um, I'm afraid I'm over time, so I'm sorry for this. <laughs> Try to, to run through it.